Hello everyone and welcome to the podcast We Shall Grow Old. I'm Nick Fiore, your host, and this is the first episode we are having on YouTube. Ow, I just hit my head on the roof. That hurt a lot. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a very, very fantastic day and I wanted to discuss um, a couple things. One, why we're moving on to YouTube. Well, main thing is is that like SoundCloud is a great platform, but I think that we can grow bigger and better through YouTube. And I had a lot of support by friends to go on to YouTube, so I think that's going to be the main ride from now on. I may post a couple more times on SoundCloud because I like how it works, but I think we can go a lot longer on YouTube, and it'll just be better in the long run. But um, I'm really glad that how this turned out because this logo is just insane. I'm looking at it right now. I think it's I think it's very very nice. Uh, real quick, how I made it is I uh, photoshopped the words from Google and put them on this flag right here. But I thought that was really good. But there were a couple of subjects I wanted to uh, talk about today, and one is just Florida. Why is Florida doing a good job right now when it comes to this COVID stuff while people are flocking here for spring break? But all these states are still having these numbers that are just crazy now we are rounding this curve people are starting to get this vaccine and that's good that's very good but there's still states reporting very high numbers of covid those states being new york california texas um texas is a given but what makes florida so different i i'm trying to, we're trying that the main question is is why is florida so different when it comes down to uh things and i just i get really upset when people tell me that Florida is such a bad state for COVID because it has like the most amount of numbers, but we don't have the most amount of numbers. Most, um, last I checked, the most amount of COVID cases came from New York, New York, New York City alone. Um, but I, I don't really think that has anything to do with being a Democrat or Republican. I just think it's the personal choice that those people made, you know, like the governor of New York, I don't think did a very good job at all. Like, you know, I mean, it's just it's just painful for me to talk about it because I love New York, but people talk trash about Florida having a large large amount of COVID cases, but yes, we did, but Florida was prepared. Florida had masks. Florida had aid. All these Democratic states never asked for it, and the ones that did, some of them got it, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and that also falls into the category why I'm not the biggest Trump supporter anymore. But Florida didn't have to have the U.S. Navy come. New York and California did. They had two hospital ships deployed over there. Granted, I did look into those ships, and they aren't really the best suited class for um, being a hospital ship. They used to be big oil tankers, so the sophistication of that ship in regards to, like, Efficiency rolling around patients in there is not not the best, but You know like I don't understand People still go here and I think it's because that Florida right now is just it is called the last free state and I can understand why because Florida's governor is doing such a good job in keeping America America You you have a choice you live in a free country you have the choice to do whatever you want right if you don't want this vaccine, don't get it. I don't care. If you do, get it. If you want the vaccine, get it. I don't care. Me personally, I'll get the vaccine as soon as I can. You know, I'm not some person that thinks I that knows. I'm not some random guy off the streets that thinks he knows a lot about science when he doesn't. I know how vaccines work. Okay, I know how they're supposed to work. And I know how a viral vaccine works. Okay, yeah, you're going to get sick. You're going to get sick from it. You're going to feel a fever. But that's that's the reason. That's how a vaccine works. You know, you're injecting a virus into you. Anyway. But Ron DeSantis, our governor of Florida, was under fire recently because uh, he wanted to give the vaccines to a specific county. This county had a large pers uh, percentage of old people 
elderly people. Seniors first. That's been the campaign for vaccines down here in Florida. If you're one of the few listeners that listen to me out of state, I uh, thank you for coming on here anyway. Um, but, you you know, he's wanted to give the vaccine to these people. And these people said no. And they said, we don't want the vaccine. So if you don't, if no one wants something, what are you going to do? You're, you're not going to give it to them. It's obvious. You, if they don't want it, you're going to respectfully say, okay, we'll give it to another county that needs it. So that's exactly what Ron DeSantis did, and, he, and he's under fire for it. You live in America. You have a choice. You can vote if you don't want something. You know, in the elections, on the ballots, you can vote for the next mosquito control. No one really does it, but you can. It just It just makes me upset that people don't really know what they're talking about. And it's basic stuff, you know? It's basic stuff that you should know about politics and how American uh, American voting system works. You know? When it comes down to the election, I, I don't care. Joe Biden's the president. What do you do? You know? This is a... It's just people... Conservatives. And, and I don't identify as a Republican, right? I just started a lot on that one, I know. <laughs> I do that a lot. I'm always stuttering all my words. I identify as a Republican. But what conservatives tend to say is that this, this election is crazy. It's, it means the definition of our future. No, it doesn't. It's like any other election. And I know I'm only 18, but we're almost 18. I mean, maybe by the time this is up, I'll be 18. But I'm only, I know I'm only young, but I'm not stupid. You know? After getting into politics my freshman year of high school, I'm not stupid. I know how this works. Okay, this isn't the craziest election of all time where America is going to go downhill from here. Okay, America is and always will be the best. This is how it is. America is a free country. We have the strongest military in the world. Regardless if it gets defunded $1 billion, we're still going to have the biggest military in the world. Regardless. Don't agree with that. Not saying we should. Because, you know, America didn't become a superpower by cheaping out its military. Just saying. But, you know, this isn't the most important election. It's an important one, and it's one that's going to go down in history because Donald Trump. It's because of Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a totally different kind of president that we weren't expecting. But he did a good job. I think he did a good job. There's just a couple things that I had a problem with him and I don't support him anymore. But when it comes back down to Florida's governor, I think he should run for president. I just think that he need if John, if Ron DeSantis wants a ch- shot at the White House, he needs to build a good campaign around himself. But let's jump from that to COVID. Another thing, people were saying how bad COVID is in Florida, as I was talking about that before. But California and New York, I don't, I didn't look up the statistics for California, but California teens during quarantine, per 100,000 kids, there were 12.8 suicides. That may not seem like a lot, and it may not seem significant to you, but that's, that's a, you know, that's a teenage boy, teenage girl. They could have not shown any signs of depression. They should. They could have just been lonely. You know, we'll talk about loneliness in a minute because I think it's important too. But in Florida, we only had about eight or nine. I think it's eight. It could be nine. But nine suicides per 100,000. Granted, that's a lot. That's nine kids. Gone. I know I sounded like Joe Biden there, but it's true. Those kids, their families will never see again. And I think that mental health is important. So Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, pushing hard and hard to get kids back in school, a.k.a. myself back in school, means a lot. Especially when he's taking into consideration the mental health. I mean, we haven't seen our friends in so long. And little did I know... That March 13th or whatever, the last day we got out of school in 2020, was going to be the last time I saw my friends. You know, it was the last time I saw the football team, the senior football team. And I didn't even know it. And I've never seen any of them again. My senior friends that year. I'm a senior now. But my junior year, I didn't even know that I, that March 13th or whatever was going to be the last day I ever seen them. You know, I would have would have said goodbye. You know, I'm not trying to get emotional here, but I, you know, little did I know. So everyone felt lonely quarantine. Everyone fell into a little state of depression. I understand that. That's why it's important that our governors 
pushed hard and hard to get us back at school in the fall. And guess what? Florida schools went back to school right on time. And all of our schools, well, I don't know about all of them, because I go to a private school. Um, I am, you know, I grew up in a, I grew up in a pretty good family to where we have enough funds to go to a private school. And I'm not a snob about it either. I help out as much, we help out the community as much as we can. So, back off on that, okay? But, Florida, you know, we're back in school. We, you know, some schools might be out for two days of the week and then go online, which is fine. But it's good that we have interaction with our friends again. I think that's important. Especially when we have developing minds. We don't need this right now. We need to be back in school. And regardless if the school system is flawed, I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is the fact that we need our kids back in school all across the nation to get interaction with their friends again. That's important. To me, that's important. To you, whoever's listening to this, to the one person that's listening to this right now, that's important. You know it, I know it, we all know it. Get us back in school. Because before you know it, if we're not back in school, who knows? In Florida, maybe that nine point, you know, that nine percent goes up to twelve. And that twelve percent in California goes up to eighteen. And before you know it, we're gonna end up like Wyoming, which has twenty four kids per one hundred thousand die of suicide. Just saying. Just saying. I think that's in, it's important to note that. Um, but you know, I'm not saying that I'm right about everything, or my the party that I'm a, you know associated with isn't right about everything. Like uh, a lot of people are blaming Joe Biden right now for the gas prices. I'm in Florida, gas is two eighty nine right now, but I see across the nation it's at three fifty five, four fifty five, five fifty five. I understand. I understand that you're frustrated. That's high. But gas I don't know if you guys know gasoline is supposed to be a little bit of ex- a little bit expensive. It's not supposed to be 169. You know in Florida the lowest it got was 155. I saw it at a Murphy's Express for 155. Not saying that's good gasoline, <laughs> but <laughs> go down on the Murphy's Express, it's 155 down there, man. You can fill up your truck and everything. You know, when I I don't know, man. I just think Gasoline is supposed to be an expensive thing to buy, you know, for almost, a lot of kids don't even realize, like, they're just now realizing that most of their life, Obama was president. I don't remember Bush. I really don't remember Bush at all. And he was a Republican. And looking back and talking to my parents, gas prices were high as hell when Bush was the president. Same thing with Obama. They were high. Even when Trump went in the office initially, it went high. It was high. Gas prices were high. It was like three fifteen a gallon. Then Trump opened up the pipeline in Canada, which brought it down a little bit. And yes, Joe Biden closing down the pipeline did uh, raise the price. But that's not the full reason. You know, when gas sig- significantly went down... If you if you if you live in Florida, um, it went down to one sixty nine, and it was at like one sixty nine for a good long while, and it w- it would bounce around back to one eighty five and go up and down, but it never went above two dollars a gallon. For a while, it never went above two dollars a gallon. But you know why? It was because Arabia and Russia were fighting over oil, fighting over customers of oil. Right, they wanted to sell their oil to the rest of the world, and they wanted to outcompete each other. That's what they wanted. They wanted to outcompete each other. It's business marketing. They wanted to outcompete each other. They wanted to make more money. So what do you do? If you're, if you're, uh, what's it called? You know, if I'm making burritos, and then there's an, there's another burrito shop, two doors down. What do you do? You start to produce more. You lower your prices, or you do some kind of thing. That's what they were doing. They were lowering their prices. Producing more, lowering their prices, supply and demand. There was so much oil. Price for oil was like zero dollar. It was like negative one dollar. It's like negative zero point zero one. So negative one cent. That's how much a barrel of oil costed. 
that wasn't supposed to happen. No one realizes that that was not supposed to happen. It wasn't because of people weren't traveling. That might have, that might have done a little bit. You know, I could have seen that. You know, if producing the oil that we are out right now in the Middle East, that I could have seen that bringing it down ten cents. That's it. But that wasn't supposed to happen. Gasoline wasn't supposed to go down to one sixty nine. Granted, I would rather it be at one sixty nine right now. Uh, and, I, and I am upset that the gas prices are high, because when I started driving, it was never, you know, I, w I started to drive, I started my junior year when it started to go down, right? It was at like 249 a gallon when I started to drive. Okay, 249 And that's how it was for about, give or take a couple cents. That's how it is at every gas station, give or take a couple cents. <laughs> But yeah, two two forty nine is how it was, and then it started going down when when COVID started to happen. Now, I know that sounds like a, it's a coincidence, but it wasn't because of, excuse me, it wasn't because of COVID. Because that trade war was happening, or well, not the trade war, I, call it a trade war, call it the oil war, whatever you want to call it. That was not supposed to happen. That that really wasn't supposed to happen. You, it's not how that works. Really wasn't. And I, and I think that people gloss over that and they find something to blame on. I don't like Joe Biden, but I don't blame him for the gas prices. I'll joke around, but I don't mean it because I know, I know how it works. Like, let me just get this in your head right now. That was not supposed to happen. Okay. Now we're going to move on. <laughs> we're going to move on from politics. And I think I stated my side of this really well, if you're new to the channel. Um, we're going to move on to Instagram, and I only got one question. Or maybe two. Yeah, I got it one from my buddy. Uh, who was Tycho Brah? Brah? Um, I was reading about him today, and it amazes me because we, I was just on a retreat a couple, a couple days ago. I need to rub my eye real quick. I'm not crying, I just... Got something in my eyeball. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, so Taco... Taco. Yo, Taco, come here. Um, I'm just gonna... We're gonna call him Bra. Bra. So he was like a philosopher for like ast astrology. And that kind of stuff amazes me. Stars and the galaxies and planets and stuff like that. It amazes me because... There's so much out there that we just don't know about, you know, and and I'm glad that we're exploring it because people are always like, well, why are we exploring a thing when we've got problems down here? I just think it's important to know what's up there. And there's so many tools and instruments that we have. Like there's satellites that can predict droughts 10 years in advance and gives people from other countries a warning. That's something. But I want to go back in time a little bit before like the time of Jesus when the main religion was Jewish. That was the main religion. However, the people that lived in like the Americas or Canada or Mexico or South America, they worshipped the sun and the stars. Now, let me paint you a picture. It's winter in a time before luxury. So this is like the cave. You're like in like the Aztec age. Not even. Way back. Before America was colonized, you're a person living in that society. And it's in the winter time. Or the spring. Or let's say you live in the deserts around Utah. You're a uh, Native American tribe. And I'm not trying to be racist here. But you wake up, because it gets cold at the nights, so you wake up from a cold night, and you're watching the sunrise. And as soon as the sun crests over the hill, that warmth hits you. If I'm being honest here, actually, well, I, I can't see myself doing that. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you here. If I didn't know about Jesus or God, I would probably worship the sun. Granted, I know God's real and I know Jesus is real. 
and I'm not saying to switch philosophies or switch religions, but don't you think that if you didn't know who God was, or Jesus was, or any of these religions, if you weren't Islam, Jewish, Orthodox Christian, Christian, atheist, don't you think you would worship the sun? The thing that rises every morning and sets. The thing that rises gives you warmth, keeps you warm throughout the day. The one that grows your food. Don't you think you would have thanks for the sun? Just saying. I think that's an important topic, and maybe we can catch up on that another time. But this is a short one. I just wanted to talk about stuff because they were on my mind recently, and I wanted to get my points across. But uh, thank you guys for so much for tuning in. And if you have a question, you can email me. We shall not. Uh, we shall grow old at gmail.com, or you can text my phone number, or you can find me on Instagram on my personal Instagram account, Nicholas underscore Fiori one twenty two. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like I said, you can contact me any of those times. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. It really means a lot. And um, see you guys next time.